Okay. Um, moving on, we have a panel on digital transformation of everything. So I would like to invite the panelists. So our panelists include uh, Mr. Fadi. He's a, a senior director at Islat UAE, and he's also a digital transformation expert. So I would like to invite Fadi to please uh, join. And then we have Mr. David Soldani, CTO Huawei Australia. So I would like Mr. David to be um, to join us. And then we have Mr. Sunil um, from CloudTech um, Info PTY LTD. He's an uh, enterprise, senior enterprise architect. So I would like Mr. Sunil to join us. And um, finally, I'll be uh, moderating the panel as well. So um, I think we have the panelists ready. Um, hello, Fadi. So I would like to start with you. And uh, my first question is from you, like, what does digital transformation mean for businesses? So what exactly digital, digital transformation is? Hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Very good. Well, first of all, thanks for the invitation um, uh, to speak in this panel. So uh, to answer this question, actually, I mean, uh, I think there's, um, there's a common uh, misunderstanding when it comes to the word digital transformations in the market. So uh, a lot of people, when they hear digital, um, they think maybe it's a new uh, app or a software or a portal or an e-commerce for an organization or something like this. And, and I think... Um, this is, of course, it's beyond this. So uh, digital transformation refers to a uh, complete change um, uh, management uh, strategy within our organization. So it is changing the way we do business to cope with the rapid uh, adoption of the technology. And this is why digital transformation is needed in, in across all industries. So, um, so digital transformation is a complete, I would say, a journey. Uh, that touch uh, that communication and technology is just an enabler layer to enable this journey and and uh, to reach to the objectives and goals uh, it's not about adapting or implementing a new uh, type of uh, hardware or software or technology or portal uh, in any organization perfect thank you fadi so my next question is from dr david soldani cto huawei um, what do you think, what are the barriers that usually block any path to the transformation? So could you please uh, throw some light on it? Um, I think that the, um, there are several challenges. So uh, not in order of priority, but uh, just to, to mention a few of them. I do see a lot of opportunity though, actually. Uh, Your voice is a bit low. Could you please adjust the volume? Can you hear me better now? Yeah, it's better. Yeah, yeah so uh, looking at the, uh, the challenge, I think we could start from the, uh, the business model. So once we have uh, identified the sector, we can think of uh, smart city, for example. Yeah, we need to develop our um, uh, business model that will lead to business cases. And uh, uh, in practice, the other challenge is to assemble the, uh, an ecosystem. So that means a core team with uh, the core stakeholders. In this case, I think the main stakeholder will be the government, and in particular the council of that particular uh, city. Then, uh, once that has been agreed, we uh, the other challenge is to uh, prioritize uh, what has to be uh, digitalized first. Digitalization uh, encompasses many things, but overall, I think. Uh, the focus is to shift uh, the business processes, uh, as uh, uh, the, the Fadi says before, uh, and uh, into something that is executable using information and communication uh, technology. That mainly go from uh, a government governance could go through the uh, how the business is run, um, the different facets of it, down to the uh, specific uh, procedure. And all the information has to be, then the other challenge is to transform the relevant information uh, into uh, digital information. And here I think the, the, the main thing is to uh, harmonize the data model 
so that, for example, two hospitals uh, can uh, speak each other. And on top of it, we need to think of uh, all the security and uh, privacy prevention measures that there is no breach and therefore the confidentiality, integrity, and availability information is in place. Once that understood, I think that a challenge is to uh, look at the technologies uh, to run those particular uh, uh, application um, meeting those, uh, those use cases. And here, uh, the technology are three type of uh, uh, technologies. So the first, it is about data value technologies. Uh, so you will need to uh, have uh, uh, databases, uh, storage capabilities, uh, uh, the way you're capturing all this information uh, in the various form, not only video, but uh, most of the information today is exchanged through text and voice. Uh, uh, if you think about humans, uh, is integrated, but then we would need to think also of the, the machines, how the machine communicate and have a way to capture this as well. The second uh, technology that has to be in place are AI platforms. AI platform, which is not just about uh, uh, deep neural networks, uh, which is, uh, yeah, rather clear how it works, but I think uh, uh, beyond AI, I think we need, beyond the deep neural network, we need to think about the reasoning systems uh, because finally, digitalization needs to come along with uh, knowledge computing. What people are interested are into the, into the knowledge. So if uh, it's not just an observation that an image is a cat or a dog, we need to understand the, the reasoning behind. So there are different challenges technology. The technology is not mature enough, like the uh, graph technology and others. And then the last uh, that we tend to forget uh, but I think is the most important uh, are the connected networks. Connected networks that today, like we reviewed, uh, I've shown you that uh, most of the technology deployed today do not meet uh, the requirements of going beyond enhancing the end user experience. If you think of a smart city where you do have a connectivity to uh, service robots, or um, digital twinning, where you need to have a real time integration information instead of modeling. Modeling the city, you, you do see in uh, real time different buildings and you can use augmented reality instead of virtual reality. So I mean, the requirements are, 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 are usual. We are thinking of uh, more than 50 to 100 megabit per second uh, communication in the uplink, like if you run a drone to capture the information down to a gigabit per second in the downlink when you, you, you need to receive a, a massive type of information. So I, I, I spoke a lot, I hope I gave you a sense, but they're all opportunities. So that, that to me are all things that, uh, that practically are not challenges, but uh, the opportunity for uh, moving forward, yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, uh, Dr. David. So my next question is from uh, Sunil, who is Senior Enterprise Architect at uh, Cloud Tech Info. So Sunil, what do you think, what is the culture needed for digital transformation? Yeah, uh, hello. Yeah, yes. uh, the culture, definitely they need to have an open mind. So one of the key thing, uh, digital transformation is a double-edged sword. So many companies, they feel uh, that having a digital transformation means adapting it, the cutting edge technology, they get immediate benefits. That is one uh, school thought. The other school thought is uh, they feel adapting technology, they may lose their job. So the two uh, fractions in any company. So we need to address the type of the company and based on what is the kind of, uh, 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 what I can say is uh, aggressiveness they have and what kind of risk appetite they're having. So based on that, we must try to understand the culture and based on that, we must try to uh, prescribe them what is the best way for them to go. Said this, one of the key things we need to address is uh, we need to profile the users and able to get the low hanging fruit and able to show them the benefit, like what is the amount of time they're saving, the amount of uh, uh, innovation they can able to achieve. And ultimately any company wants, what is the profit margin they're able to get achieved. So this is the end result of uh, addressing culture. Perfect. 
So my next question is from Mr. Anup, who is data scientist at Maps AI. So I would like to know what tools can be used for digital transformation and what do you think is the biggest obstacle in terms of, you know, uh, for programmers for, and data scientists for implementing digital transformation solutions? Thank you very much for inviting me, Dr. Hafiz, and uh, good afternoon to everyone. So now when it comes to tools used in digital transformation, right from modeling process up till the uh, implementation of various kind of uh, strategic initiatives, you have a series of tools we can use. As an example, when it comes to modeling process, one can start using enterprise architect level modeling tools somewhat like Erwin. You can have a business process modeling tools which can be used. Example is simple flow charting or BPMN notations using Signavi or those sort of tools. Then you need to have uh, some level of uh, architecting capabilities. So again, there are quite a few architecting tools. Uh, again, another example is Erwin. Um, beyond that, next phase comes to implementing those strategic initiatives using uh, data and automation tools. So as we know, uh, there are quite a few uh, software as software services which you can uh, use uh, in, in especially uh, Azure or AWS. Um, you can have uh, data storage tools, you can have uh, machine learning and AI capabilities. And uh, beyond that nowadays, uh, RPA is a very big initiative. So you can build your digital workforce using uh, those uh, robotic process automation, uh, which can replace your repetitive mundane tasks. So this, this is basically a huge area. So depending on your uh, business outcomes and related strategic initiatives, you can literally map what exactly uh, capabilities you are building and you can use those uh, relevant tools. And, and the beauty of this part is nowadays, uh, everything is uh, as a service model. So uh, you don't have to take a uh, huge risk of investing huge money into uh, tools. You can just use them as a service to try out few use cases. And based on that, you can uh, see if it is delivering results to you. So uh, coming to the uh, second part of your question, uh, what are the biggest obstacles? or what are the uh, uh, basically uh, areas of concern? So uh, to my understanding, as a data scientist, I, I see it uh, a role which uh, should connect technology with people. And when it comes to any organization, I think uh, it is uh, by people for people. So you have people who are working in the organization in different capacities. You have customers who are, again, people. And you have uh, investors and uh, all those uh, stakeholders from the top. So any digital initiative has to be conveyed in a good language to all those people or stakeholders. As an example, um, if you end up giving a message that there will be a little robot sitting on the chair of a employee and then it will replace that particular person, that sort of initiative will be never, never helped by a person who is going to you know, give you a good idea about a business domain. So you will have to really, you know, come up with a well-drafted message which suits to all the uh, stakeholders in organization. And, and uh, again, you need to show uh, the outcomes time to time uh, to all those uh, stakeholders that how it is benefiting to all parties and how it is a win-win scenario to you. Thank you, Anup. Um, I would like um, to ask Mr. David Soldani to please continue on this point that how a digital transformation project members can engage stakeholders, what initiatives they can take to engage stakeholders in those digital transformation projects. Yes, um, digital transformation um, covers um, all vertical sectors and horizontal as well. So we will need to um, um, take some of them uh, as an example, because I think that the requirements um, in some cases are uh, completely different. Now, um, probably the one of the most complex uh, um, scenarios is the, the smart city. So to me, the smart city uh, 
the first we we need to have uh, the willingness and the capabilities in terms of budget from the government so it has to be the government which has a vision a strong view on how they intend to modernize uh, um, uh, the city uh, using uh, information and communication technology and come out with uh, not only a vision but um, a set of requirements uh, in the area they intend to uh, digitalize. They may, go, they may go from identity management, uh, for example, down to uh, driving licenses, or it could be like um, uh, thinking of um, trains or public transport with, a lot, or optimize, reduce the time it takes from going from uh, A to B. So we need to have uh, a clear requirement. So that, that's the first step. We need to have, um, uh, the main stakeholder that uh, takes forward initiative and then brings uh, together a core team, the core team where you have the uh, other players uh, um, that are willing to invest uh, and bring on the table the value, which means the uh, contributions uh, uh, which are nicely integrating together in order uh, to achieve that particular goal constrained by uh, the budget and the requirements uh, uh, of the government. So if you think of, uh, for example, uh, um, healthcare, and then I, I, I conclude, the healthcare, they, they have many challenges because the healthcare, there are different schemes and insurances that can be a public sector, it could be a private sector. So you have different types of stakeholders. Let's focus on the on the uh, public sector. So in this case, uh, we will need to have a, a clear objective to say, okay, my target is in 10 years from now, all my uh, old people must live uh, um, independently and active, remain as independent, as active as long as possible in the enabling uh, technology are, for example, robotic platforms, uh, communication technology, sensors, so anything that would offload the particular caretakers today mostly uh, being either, either the one we pay, so nurses or whatever is around, or the families themselves. So offload them is so that we can focus, on, uh, focus on, uh, on this. And then we will need to assemble the, uh, uh, the other contributors that we bring in the technology and they, they are willing to invest, innovate, and, uh, and create this, uh, this cake together that they can be then copy and paste uh, from, uh, for example, in Australia, could be done here in French forest, uh, St. Ives, and then you copy paste uh, all the, like in Melbourne, for example, you have, yeah, that to me is the, 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 the success, uh, the key to success uh, into, um, into digitalizing a particular a vertical sector, yeah. Thank, thank you, Dr. David. So my next question is from Mr. Fadi from Etislat uh, regarding how do digital transformation projects start in organizations? So could you please throw some light on the, on the you know, process from start to finish, how it happens? Yeah, well, I think, um, I mean, if you look at uh, um, uh, the, the journey that we were talking about of, of digital transformation, there's a very important um, uh, element to the success, uh, which is the buy-in from the leadership. So uh, there are multiple stakeholders need to work uh, with each other. But if you look at all the challenges in any journey for, for transformation, if you don't have the belief and the buy-in from the top, the leadership of the organizations, nothing will happen on the downside. In many organizations, we've seen examples that uh, for them, it was a buzzword in the market, digital transformation, uh, chief digital officer, and all of these things. And what they have done is just maybe um, promoted or changed the title of their uh, current CIO or IT director to uh, chief digital officer. And they said, we are going into digital transformation, which is not, um, not the right approach. Because the people they need to be uh, leading this they need to be a strategy people, not an IT people. 
this is where it's a complete it's a completely wrong to be driven from technology from IT perspective only. It has to come from strategy perspective, and this strategy has to be aligned with the goals and objectives of the uh, of the leadership and the shareholders. So it starts from the overall vision of the company. What do they need to achieve? The competitive situation in the market, and then the strategy has to be designed and need to be designed and identifying the stakeholders to drive it within the organization. And those stakeholders is not only the tech guys, it's not only the marketing guys, it's, not, it's the complete different functions in the organization. And when you look at what you need to do, uh, also I agree with, 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 with Anoub, it has to be driven, it has to be a human-centric approach. So you need to look at the different uh, um, uh, aspects of the operation. So the inside, the people that you that doing the job, the employees, how do you do, how do you do the processes and please how to be more efficient, how to help them into be more productive within the organization internally, how to serve your customer, this is the external part, how to serve your customer, how to how do how do you deliver your services in a more effective way, and um, uh, innovative way to cope with the current rapid speed of adapting for technology because now. Uh, we've seen uh, in the in the pandemic situation how this digital transformation has been has been uh, 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 a topic that everyone is discussing because a lot of organizations they have realized that this is not now a, a, a nice to have it's a must to have in order to survive a lot of them they were just delaying this before the pandemic or just saying in the marketing uh, communication that we are going into into uh, these kind of, you know, upgrading our infrastructure, uh, doing, uh, I don't know, uh, our data strategy. Uh, so they, they talked about an individual, I would say, projects or, or technology uh, pieces, but they didn't uh, talk about how do they re-innovate the way they do uh, business from A to Z. And for that, one of the main challenges, um, just to continue what my colleagues were, uh, were talking about, is the resistance of the people. You need to have the right people to adapt the technology. Whatever, whatever software you, you buy or technology or hardware or anything you deploy from, from uh, the technology perspective will not help you to achieve your, your targets from digital transformation unless you have people they believe in the journey. And in order to get those people, you need to help them, you need to support them to believe. And if the top of the, of the, of the organization is not believing, is not adapting this as his, his, his uh, main objective um, uh, to drive it down to the organization, nothing will happen. So it's not a project that I give it to one guy or one department in an organization and tell them, please do a digital transformation for me. This is a big mistake. So it has to be something, it has to be changing the culture, creating this innovative culture within an organization that supports innovation, not digitizing of an existing services a lot of companies they go into a mistake of okay this is the way i do it now i'm gonna buy a software to make it in a digital way this is the wrong approach the right approach is to innovate and introduce a new uh, innovative ways of delivering your service this is where you really go into uh, the maximum and you benefit out uh, um, of this uh, digital transformation uh, journey and and uh, and and this is this is where uh, unfortunately, a lot of uh, companies, they do the mistake. They just think of upgrading their current, uh, I don't know, ERP provider, buying new licenses, or even moving to a cloud will help them to uh, make more profit. And this is the wrong understanding. These are enablers. Yes, you need to do these things. And you need to be brave and sometimes take a decision of Forget about a huge investment that you have done in a legacy IT systems in the past and maybe adapt a new um, a small tool or software in the cloud that will give you more results than the, the millions of investment that you have done in a, in, a, in a legacy system you have within your organization. And, and for that, of course, the fear, the resistance from employees will come because people, they will think that digital uh, tools now will replace their work. And this is where the leadership comes, where you need to give the security and safety and encourage all of your employees to be innovative. There are some, uh, of course, uh, 
hard decisions to be made, people need to be changed. Some people, they cannot cope. And I give you an example of, of one of our clients we were working with. They have discovered when the pandemic started that more than 65% of his employee, it's a large group, local group. More than 65 of his local employees are in the uh, age of uh, above, um, above 50. And a lot of them, they cannot deal with technology. They even cannot deal with, with, the, with the simple you know, uh, computer skills. And, and when the pandemic started, and although the top, the, 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 the owner and the chairman of this organization is a very smart and well-educated guy, this is the reality they have faced. And when it comes to delivering services and changing the way they do business to go on, on a virtual mode and start uh, adapting e-commerce and delivering services uh, uh, via digital channels, uh, they couldn't, um, they, it was a big uh, obstacles for them. So a hard decision has to be made into changing people. This is maybe the last thing that you need to go for, but if, if it takes to, um, uh, uh, to achieve your goals that some people need to be changed and new talents and, and skills need to be introduced, this is what you need to take. So that's why I'm, I, I repeat again, it's not about changing your, your, uh, your infrastructure, software or hardware only, this comes at the end to enable and to support this operation, the whole journey. You have to start with a strategy. You have to start with having the right people in, on board and you have to believe and drive this um, culture of innovation across the whole organization in order to achieve uh, the outcome of, uh, of the digital transformation journey. Thank you, uh, Mr. Fadi. Um, it was a great response. My next question, <clears throat> My next question is from Mr. Sunil that how digital transformation can help organization uh, for post-pandemic recovery and what are the emerging digital transformation trends? Uh, thanks, Rafi. So one of the key things happening, uh, the post-pandemic, so all these years, uh, whatever the digital transformation was addressed for the customer, so where they can able to access the services provided from anywhere. With the pandemic, it has been realized is not only the customers need to be focused, even the employees must be able to give the services from any part of the world or from any devices. That's the first part. The second thing, what the post-pandemic has realized is, companies have realized employee cost in a good CBD like Sydney or like a Hong Kong or Singapore, it may cost about $15,000 per annum. If a company having about 1,000 employees, they're literally saving $1.5 million per annum. And the second most important thing is, if the company is able to see an employee is able to work from the home, the post-pandemic, especially in developed countries, work from home task will be outsourced or offshore. The reason, nobody wants to buy an iPhone which has been manufactured in Australia, US. So ultimately the business drives what is expected. So post-pandemic, the biggest challenge for especially developed countries, the workforce, especially the technical skill work, will be completely, not completely, at least partially whatever possible will be either outsourced or offshore. Again, the key enabler as uh, our previous uh, Fadi was telling, because everything is based on cloud, it does not matter where, where your resource comes from. It, the resource can be anywhere, any part of the world. So the post pandemic, the biggest challenge, the, the changes will occur in three industries. One is in education, because the industry has seen, students are able to work from the, study from the home. So if they're able to continue the same process, only they will be hybrid environment. Only student, when they want to do the practicals, they'll be coming to the universities. Otherwise, they can able to study from the home. First thing. And health. Health, I was looking at some of the statistics. In US, the health industry, telehealth was about 3 billion US dollars last year. And because of pandemic, some of the legislation, they changed such a way the patient can be treated remotely. They're expecting in the next five years about $300 billion worth of industry in by, by telehealth itself. So the next biggest uh, uh, occurring after education is health. And work from home, as I told you earlier, so the skills will be completely scattered. And as uh, Fadi was telling, definitely there are two kind of uh, workforce in the company. Sometimes, of course, oh, younger generation, older generation, are ultimately what is the mindset? how they want to change to be employable and how fast they can able to change. So said this one, definitely pandemic is brought as a 
new light. The new light is that, uh, as uh, early uh, expected when uh, uh, from my audience they told, the key thing is digital transformation was not a was not uh, an option. is inevitable. It's not only inevitable. Again, they must go in the right way. And post pandemic, especially what we can able to see is many companies have jumped into cloud. One of the key thing is the systems what has been currently designed is for vertical scaling. Once they gone into cloud, they got immediate uh, results because cloud is based on uh, uh, its uh, OPEX model, just pay for usage. But again, systems what they have got is not designed for a SaaS model, so it's not for vertical horizontal scaling. So they'll be getting fat bills. So this will again innovate the whole IT industry into looking into a new uh, what I can say a paradigm. It's okay. Yes, Just thank you very much. Please. Thank you, Sneel. Um, so my next question is again from um, Mr. Fadi regarding um, how Atislat is enabling uh, digital transformation, what role it's playing, or any case studies you are having at Atislat or in UAE of digital transformation enabled by Atislat. So if you can throw some light on this. Yep. Well, actually, I mean, uh, we have uh, we have uh, ourselves as it's a lot. We're we're going into a digital transformation journey. So this Salat has started this maybe early uh, five uh, five years back, um, when uh, the new leadership at that time uh, they realized that the future uh, of the telecom is changing, and um, there is a big need to um, to go into uh, the digital world and start. Um, changing the way we um, uh, we work, we offer the service to our clients and the type of service that we offer in the market. So this is where Tesalat Digital has been created five years back uh, with this concept. So it was it was a, a, um, a very brave decision at that time to put a huge investment into creating um, a, a complete entity within the Tesalat Group to focus on the digital services. Uh, the shareholders they were very supportive and um, allocated the right uh, amount of investment for that. So today, as we speak, this, this entity is, uh, um, is one of the fastest uh, growing engines for it's a lot. Um, it is across the, the region now. They have started in Saudi Arabia and, and Egypt, and it is engaged with many um, large-scale digital projects across the country, within the private sector and, and, uh, and the public sectors. Um, so this is this is where um, how important is uh, was digital for us and still uh, at the same time we have we have changed a lot of, uh, of ways and maybe a lot of you are the salat customers they realize what was the difference between how how the service were, were um, delivered how the customer service experience was five years back and and as today and it's still improving a lot of um, digital channels has been enabled um, uh, to uh, to communicate with our customers. Um, and um, a lot of innovative um, digital services has been introduced to the consumer market and to the uh, B2B market. Mm -hmm. So it is a journey. We're still in that journey. Uh, we have learned a lot. Um, a lot of our processes has been automated. I'll give you a, an example, an example, and this is a case uh, sure, uh, um, that we have, we have worked on uh, a couple of years back, where um, just adoption to RPA, Robotic process automation uh, technology has helped us to to save uh, a big number um, on a monthly basis uh, to do a lot of uh, processes. We have more than 700 bots working within it a lot now um, uh, that replaced uh, um, a huge um, uh, operation before was done manually, and and this is one of the areas where we're still uh, also uh, evolving. Um, uh, we're um, we're, we're actually uh, uh, now uh, uh, introducing this service to our clients. So we started to engage with organizations in the enterprise, helping them into digitizing um, uh, their, their processes by utilizing uh, similar technology to the RPA. So uh, we, are, we consider ourselves as the backbone of the country. We have, we, have, we have the network, definitely. We keep investing in that as, as, the, as the main enabler for um, uh, for communication and support in the country 
uh, and one of the uh, biggest um, uh, projects that we're running is the 5G, as you all know, uh, from, from connectivity perspective. So we have invested um, a huge amount for the last year. We're going to continue investing this year and, and uh, for the next few coming years to cover the whole uh, country with a 5G. We were one of the first, actually, we were the first in the Middle East and Africa, and one of the first in the world to, um, to go uh, in this brave decision and uh, massive investment. Uh, and now we're working closely with the enterprise sector uh, into creating and innovate uh, new use cases of how to utilize such technology, such a te communication technology to serve uh, their business operations. So we work with ports, we work with um, uh, the healthcare sector, we work with uh, logistics and transportation, we work with uh, um, uh, uh, the automotive sector and, uh, and the uh, RTA, for example, into uh, their initiatives for driverless cars. Uh, we have a lot of these uh, kind of uh, running projects today and where it is a lot provide the uh, right enablement uh, layers to support this, uh, their journeys. So this is the infrastructure, uh, infrastructure part. We have also a massive program for our cloud business, as you all know. So most of the big um, uh, hyperscaler uh, cloud, public clouds now um, uh, in the country are hosted uh, in Etisalat. We have uh, Microsoft, Oracle, and others. We have a multi-cloud approach uh, to, the, uh, to, the, to our customers. So we provide um, uh, all of those global public clouds as well as our own cloud and private clouds uh, and a co-location more than um, uh, 11, 12 data centers are there operating in, uh, in UAE. Uh, we also um, have uh, introduced um, an IoT platform as a service uh, to, the, to, the, to the market where we build um, IoT uh, as a service solutions for clients. Um, and, and we have um, currently we're running the largest IoT projects actually in, uh, in the region. Uh, which is Hassantok project for the smart fire detection for all the villas in the UAE. But we also work with, with many clients like Adnok, for example, into smart petrol stations. We work with, with many clients into providing um, uh, smart services uh, and smart living um, uh, for, for residential and commercials. Um, DMCC, uh, Jumeirah Lake Towers area in, in, uh, in, uh, in Dubai, was a project has been awarded at the beginning of this year. It's uh, under implementation now where we're introducing more than uh, 10 smart services and a command and control center and a data uh, hub um, with uh, a portal and mobile applications for citizens living there. It's a complete smart district um, uh, uh, project that is under delivery today by the Salat. So a lot of uh, other interesting stuff um, as uh, to answer your question, we, we are very committed to the journey of digitizing the whole country. I mean, we're lucky to live in a country like UAE where uh, the top, and this is where, going back to my uh, initial comments, if you have the top, if you have the leadership, they're convinced and they're driving this culture of innovation, uh, your digital transformation journey is gonna be much more easier. And this is what we have in UAE from the top and uh, all, the, all the leaders here. They're, uh, they're pushing uh, everyone in the private and the public sector um, to go into uh, this direction. Thank you, Mr. Fadi. It was a really um, great and detailed response. So um, now I would like to um, open the questions to the audience if they have any questions to the panelists. Uh, maybe we can in incorporate some questions from them. So please feel free to unmute your microphone if you have any question regarding digital transformation of everything uh, from our panelists, Mr. Fadi uh, and Sunil, Anu. And so we are happy to answer, please. Whoa. Oh, no sound. Okay, so, um, well, since there are no questions from the audience yet. So my question from Anup is, um, if you can you know, elaborate about some case studies in digital healthcare uh, and digital transformation in the healthcare industry using AI. Um, so could you please uh, elaborate what is happening in the healthcare industry for digital transformation? 
I think uh, uh, looking at current scenario, what has happened that uh, people have started avoiding going to dispensaries and hospitals. What it means basically is uh, a lot of uh, scope on remote health monitoring. And especially now IoT has become a very uh, common platform for such initiatives. But beyond that, uh, Telstra in Australia also has got uh, uh, video conferencing and uh, that sort of technology for uh, uh, delivering remote health. So, uh, uh, yeah, basically using videos and smart sensors uh, for uh, driving uh, remote monitoring, that is one of the major initiatives. Uh, apart from that, recently what I have seen is uh, because of this uh, remote working and uh, isolated working, uh, people have started having certain issues with their mental health. So there is some drive towards that part as well to uh, improve mental health when they're working and living remotely. So these are the areas what I have noticed in the recent past. There can be more, but these are something uh, I've seen uh, closely. Okay, uh, thank you, Anup. My next question is from Sunil that why most of the digital transformation projects fail to achieve their overall objectives? Like what are the inefficiencies um, and what are the underlying reasons in those inefficiencies? Yeah, see one of the key thing what's, yeah. See 85% of the digital transformation project fails. Uh, it's a very, uh, what I can say is a alarming uh, statistics. One of the key reason, the company culture the way the old way of thinking they work in the same way in the old way yes it was all capex based a proper erp system was costing millions of dollars but in the new way of working it's all in terms of uh, opex model it can be in terms of thousands at the same time just because opex model they cannot drive in the same way they need to really analyze exactly what a company wants and based on as uh, uh, fadi was telling Yes, definitely must look, look from the strategy side. And the most important thing is many companies which I have worked to come across, one of the main reason is strategy is good. At the same time, the strategy must be have a proper advisors because now there's so much of capability in the technology. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes the strategists are unaware of the technology capability. Only with that, many companies they say whether the business is driving the technology or technology driving the business. It's a combination of both. Because if you look at the uh, new breed of doing the business, we must adapt technology. Though we try to look at what the capability the business needs to have, but again, we must marry the technology. So what we suggest is definitely to increase success of a digital transformation. The key thing is they must be having the management is a combination of the new breed who knows what is exactly technology is. At the same time, the strategist to know, understand exactly what the business want. Only with these two combination, the success rate can be increased. Okay. Thank you, Sunil. Um, so again, getting back to the audience, so I'm just wondering if there are any questions from the audience. Okay, so I think there are no more questions from the audience. So just to wrap up, um, it's a collective question from, I would like to have the opinion from each of the panelists that what do you recommend you know like in this post pandemic world what are the key uh, tips for effective digital tr transformation like you know like let's say one to five you say these are the five key tips for effective digital transformation projects implementation shall i take the first one yes <laughs> okay okay see uh, as all our previous panelists they told uh, digital transformation is a journey so once we say it's a journey, uh, we must be really able to abstract what is the company's capability. And based on that, we must choose what kind of technology stack we need. Because technology constantly is evolving and constantly moving. So many companies, what they're trying to do is, as our panelists were telling, they say cloud first, okay, go for AWS or go for Azure. No, we must try to see what exactly the company wants. So based on the, on the company needs, we need to separate the abstract the capability to achieve this first of all we need to have an enterprise -wise strategy when we want to have an enterprise -wise strategy we need to have a concept for our enterprise architecture is a proven concept across the world you must follow that concept 
once you follow that concept, the next important thing is you must be able to get the real time data. If you take an example of uh, a company, if a company like old style of doing the company is like having a driving a car, having like few kind of uh, parameters. But if you want to fly, especially with the modern digital technology, you must be having like a cockpit. How a cockpit has got X number of uh, uh, data coming across. So you must be able to get the real time data wherever possible from a company. So once that, again, that must come from the enterprise strategy to understand exactly what kind of data is required. So once that is done, as I told you earlier, work from home will be outsourced or offshore. So said that what's going to happen is we must be having a proper communication management. To have a proper communication, you must need to have a proper modeling. As Anup was telling, it must come from strategy or strategy when you got there some kind of a modeling called argument. And from there, it must be able to connect it to business process management. And from business process management, the data set must be connected. And from there, all the way to the software stack, UML, and to the tech stack. So it's all must be connected in real time. And of course, there are tools which can able to give you the real time information. EA tools are there. So only with this kind of a concept, having a real time information and constantly evolving with the technology, with uh, abstracting the capability with the technology, the success can be guaranteed. Okay, so next, Mr. Fadi, what, what are your five recommendations for effective digital transformation implementation? Well, I think, I mean, um, looking at the sequence, uh, where do you need to start, as I said, it always starts from what do you want to achieve? So uh, organization, they need first to have an objective. They need to define really why do they need to have digital transformation? What's the main uh, objectives and where they are, uh, what's the ultimate achievements uh, out of this journey? So you start from there. And this is again, uh, it's a strategy topic that the, the owner, the leadership of the organization, they need to answer. They need to analyze their situation, their competitive situation in the market and what where, where do they need to, uh, to, uh, to reach? How do they gonna serve their customers? And from, from these answers and these objectives defined, so once you have clarity and a clear objective statement for everyone that need to work in this project, you then look at your uh, current available uh, resources. And you look at, uh, at the people that you have. Are those people, are the right people to drive this, uh, this, uh, um, this uh, to, to drive this journey to achieve those objectives that has been defined? or there is a, a change need to happen. A change not necessarily by changing people, but by developing people. So some of those people, they need to develop new skills. They need to learn. Maybe you put them in development programs and trainings. You enable them to, uh, to be able to drive this um, uh, strategy and achieve your goals. So once you have achieved this and you have the right uh, people uh, to drive this, organize, um, this uh, strategy, you need to look at also uh, the resistance of the, um, of the rest of the people. So how to uh, achieve, and this is the main obstacle in any journey. If you have the people resistance, nothing will happen. If you have your employees, they're resisting this change. And whatever tool you're gonna bring, they will, they will not make it uh, working efficiently unless they believe in it. So they, you need to work on this, on this part and give them the trust, create this culture of innovation and, and let them feel that they're all part of this journey that, uh, and, 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 uh, and they adapt the change so they can support um, what you need. All of these things, once you have them on, on board, of course, you need then to analyze your, um, your current um, uh, enablement, so your current legacy technology, software, and IT, and everything that you have there, and what investment is required. And here is the big obstacles comes to, uh, to the situation. So people, when they see numbers, and they see the amount of investment, if you don't have a right business case that define what will be the outcome uh, of that and how you're gonna return your investment and what are the benefits you're gonna gain uh, out of this journey, uh, investors and, and shareholders will see the number of investment required to, um, to be done and then the project is killed. Nothing will happen. Or you will have bits and pieces here and there and you will not achieve what you want to achieve. So it's very important to define um, uh, uh, the right, um, I would say, or uh, uh, the right business case uh, to be presented to your shareholders in order to justify the investment. And um, the new technology now, and, and things like, uh, as I say, SaaS models and cloud and everything, uh, luckily now are enabling um, 
having more cost effective and uh, I would say uh, achievable uh, uh, adoption because the model is OPEX model, uh, less risk. You don't need to have this huge CapEx investment at the upfront. So, um, but you need to be brave sometimes to um, really forget about a huge numbers that you have invested in the past in, in a legacy system that you have in your, in your organization and adapt something new. Maybe you have bought a CRM in your, in your company, you have invested in no, five, six million US dollars and this CRM now is outdated and you need to go to a SaaS model and go something like Salesforce or something uh, similar. Uh, and forget about that investment. So you need to have these brave decisions of stopping the old way of doing things and innovate and go to the new way that will enable you to be closer from your customer and the market and achieve your financial goals. Thank you very much, Mr. Fadi. So uh, coming to Mr. Anu, um, I would like you to have your views, please. I think I would like to agree with uh, Mr. Fadi on uh, first part for sure that you have to start from top. So uh, I tend to use word called business outcomes. So based on changed business landscape, what sort of outcomes we are looking, what sort of changes we are looking in the organization. And then that study has to be done a little bit systematically. Usually you can have some uh, measurables around those uh, outcomes. And then uh, based on that, you can start investigating uh, affordable and reliable approach to address those uh, measurables. And you need to have a tailored solution for uh, each and every uh, initiative and organization. So those are four or five uh, major areas uh, I would like to uh, highlight. And uh, with Cloud Tech Info, we have come up with this acronym called SMART, which means systematic, measurable, affordable, reliable and tailored approach. So that's what I would like to advise. Thank you. So um, thank you very much. And uh, it brings me towards the end of this session. I think it was really great discussion with all of the panelists. With, uh, and I would like to thank our all panelists, Mr. Fadi from Etislat, Mr. Anu from uh, MAPCI and Mr. Sunil uh, from Cloud Tech Info. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, it was a great talk with uh, every one of you. Thank you. Yeah, thank uh, thanks, you Dr. Dr. thanks to all the participants. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. And uh, was really enriching from Mr. Fadi. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anup. Thanks. Bye -bye. Thanks a lot. Yeah.